So as we start our General Assembly, we will have an opening ceremony to be led by Jeff Kohn-Tassel, who is a member of the Cherokee Nation and also an honorary member of the ICCA Consortium. He will share with us a few words and a song to honor the eagle. The eagle provides long-term vision and help us see long into the future so that we can plan uh, for the future generations. So may we ask our tech team to present to us the opening ceremony from Jeff Kontasel. Osio Nigata, Jeff Ganoholido, Kontasel Dagwadoa, Shaligia Yetli Gwenasa I, Echoda Galski Goi. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Kontasel. I'm from Cherokee Nation, and I'm coming to you from the West Coast of Turtle Island. I'm on unceded Sklalem territory. And today, to start off the General Assembly, I wanted to share with you a eagle dance song. A Wohali is one of the highest flying birds and carries our prayers up to the heavens. So I want you all to think about that perspective, that eagle eye perspective, as we start the proceedings. And I'll share a few other thoughts at the end. Honey. to share that song with you as we start the proceedings and think about our time here. I also wanted to share a couple of Cherokee words. One is gadugi, which means no one person is left to struggle alone in life's endeavors. That's that idea of community camaraderie. We help each other out, uh, especially in difficult times. The other is digada chele'i, which means we all belong to each other for us to help each other. And taken together, these words really form the crux of our philosophy, our governance, our ways of being. And so I offer these in uh, good spirit as we take on the work together. And uh, Wado for asking me to be a part of this. Um, and I'll end by saying, Dodada Goahi, may the Creator be with you until our paths cross again. Wado. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff for uh, giving us the Cherokee culture of uh, song, uh, as well as sharing to us uh, some Cherokee words. Thank you for your words of wisdom, which just sets us in the right mood. And now at this juncture, let me uh, present to you the president's report, which will also um, serve as our welcome address for our first session of this General Assembly. So I start by saying Hagi, which is an Ifoga word, which means long live or mabuhay in Filipino. No? My indigenous greetings of kinship and solidarity I give to all of you. Our struggles are not advocacies, it is our life's vocations. The territories of life we defend are not just a piece of land, it is our life. Today we are having our first session of the 2023 General Assembly so that we can be inspired by the stories of the success in our cause 
and the courage of our environmental and human rights defenders. Over the past year since our last GA, the ICCA Consortium has participated collectively in webinars and international conferences, including the COP15 of the CBD. As to the latter, we have been emboldened by the CBD's consensus to give more recognition to the governance of IPLCs in biodiversity conservation. And this is good news. We are part of this victory. We were able to defend our barricade. We also have policy papers in relation to the CBD, and this will be discussed in detail tomorrow. So we are already inviting you in advance to join us again to discuss some policy papers, the consortium prepared, as well as some consensus points that were taken up during the previous CBD. I, I propose that we use these papers as our anchor in our discussions and in our work. Now it is our time to march forward. We have to start influencing regional and national policy because our governments and big business remain insensitive to our territories of life. It is important for the consortium to build more programs that strengthen our national federations. This is something that I really wish to pursue as your president. Crucial in this effort is the regionalization process of the consortium. But regionalization of our governance hasn't worked successfully for all. While we have active regional formations in Southeast Asia, South America, South Asia, and Africa, other regional assemblies are struggling. North America, Europe, and other parts of Asia need more strengthening. But before this can happen, we have to provide solutions and address the challenges besetting our own global consortium. This is on me and the members of the Consortium Council. This is our mandate. The Secretariat, despite their many limitations and encumbrances, have managed to keep our programs and administrative functions effective and efficient during the lockdown and the post-pandemic times. Now the Council needs to level up and provide more leadership. The Council must address its role as we move forward. To start with, we need to finally start or draft our manifesto. This is our declaration of principles, and this contains our vision, our mission, and our goals. This manifesto will guide us when we formulate public statements and approve policy papers. This will assist us when we deal with internal issues. This manifesto would help us answer that often stated question of our members on what is the relevance of the consortium to them. I propose that we form a committee composed of council members, the Secretariat, and the Council of Elders to start the process of crafting our manifesto. As we build our manifesto, the consortium must also reassess our statements and formulate a new strategic action plan for the coming years. Already, there is a need to revisit our governance procedures and our organizational structure and decision-making processes, which has been impacted by our financial situation. And we will discuss more about this in detail in our session. This strategic planning will come later this year. And a personal note, as your president, and, then, and until the remainder of my current term, I promise to visit our members' activities virtually or possible or if possible in person to provide direction and inspiration. I would like to end by sharing to you a terrifying experience that I had talking with an eight-year-old girl. I was asked to give a talk about the importance of trees and forests to grade one and two pupils. And during the open forum, the girl asked me, or a girl asked me, if trees are so important, why are we cutting down trees? A grade two child armed with such a question can really terrify even the most experienced politician such as myself. And it is for her, that child with the most disarming query that we dedicate our efforts. Hagio.
So now um after the president's report and the opening remarks hope you guys are uh satisfied with the president's report and thus i would now like to ask our treasurer call scott who will be presenting to us uh our guidelines with regards to our consensus decision making so you have uh well, as we have discussed in previous assemblies, uh, the ICCA consortium decides on the basis of consensus. So we will revisit again these guidelines. Colin will explain it to us. And then if there are any questions or clarifications, you may uh, present to us or you may ask us this, uh, after Colin has presented our consensus procedures. So Colin? Thank you, Teddy, uh, and greetings, everyone. Uh, to, to, uh, to start our General Assembly, we want to talk briefly about how we take decisions to ensure that we're all on the same page and know what to expect over the next few days. Since the beginning of the ICC Consortium, our main decision-making processes have been based on building consensus. We use this approach in many everyday governance and organizational discussions, including within the council and secretariat. Major decisions such as revisions to our statutes and election of council members are taken by consent of the General Assembly, our association's highest decision-making body. According to Article 9 of our statutes, the General Assembly decisions are taken by consensus, building upon the advice of all members and honorary members willing to contribute constructively. Failing that, decisions are valid only when approved by a supermajority of two-thirds of members in good standing present, voting by proxy or participating via electronic means. Building on this, our governance procedures state uh, that consensus has been achieved when there is general agreement, as well as an explicit lack of disagreement about a specific decision. Reasonable measures should have been taken to respond to any objections raised. Consensus-based decision-making is rooted in the principles of civil and respectful participation and collective ownership of decisions. It requires open dialogue, trust, lots of communication, and everybody should have the opportunity to share their views. It helps people establish a common understanding while respecting different values, needs, and interests. It enables everyone to work together cooperatively and in good faith to develop a solution that is sufficiently acceptable for all. It is understandable and expected that we will have diverse views within the association Consensus-based decisions can be time-consuming and difficult at times, and not everyone will get every aspect of what they want. However, the final consensus should be something that everyone can live with in the collective interests of the association. This approach to decision-making is embedded in our organizational culture, particularly for major decisions that are taken by the General Assembly. So far, the General Assembly has never had to resort to a vote to decide on any issue. For any decision <clears throat> taken by the General Assembly to be valid, it is necessary for us to have quorum. According to the statutes and governance procedures, quorum for a General Assembly decision is at least one fifth of the members in good standing. This can be reached through member participation in Lumio polls and during the general uh, and during the, the live uh, general assembly sessions. Currently, we have 191 members in good standing out of a total of 217 members. Since quorum is at least one fifth of members in good standing, this means that we require 38 of these members to participate in each general assembly decision. 
The procedures do not yet specify what happens if quorum for a particular decision is not reached through a combination of the Lumio poll and the live General Assembly session. If this happens, we suggest that the relevant consensus poll on Lumio can remain open for a, a maximum of two more weeks after the live session and the executive committee can confirm whether and when consensus has been reached. I will now share an overview of how we aim for consensus during online general assemblies and how we will take decisions on key agenda items in this general assembly. First, we have space for an open discussion among all members and honorary members about a given issue or proposed decision. This can happen either in advance of the general assembly or during the general assembly. Second, we seek to understand and resolve any objections raised either before or during the general assembly. Whoever objects to something should propose a constructive and practical modification to the proposed decision or course of action. The chair will facilitate a discussion of the, of the objections and proposed alternatives until everyone present is sufficiently satisfied. Third, <clears throat> we check that consensus has been reached. This can be done in slightly different ways if we're holding a general assembly in person or online or a combination of both. In both cases, we will ask if those present have any objections. If no objections are raised, consent is assumed. We can then move to confirming consensus with a show of hands or an online straw poll. Note that this is not a vote as such, but rather a verification that we have reached consensus. To gather inputs and build consensus on key decisions at this year's General Assembly, including for people who cannot join the Assembly live, we're using a tool called Lumio. It is designed specifically for organizations like ours that make consensus-based decisions. In the last few weeks, we've used it to advise the membership of the vacant council positions, and we will post nominations for these positions there ahead of the next two General Assembly sessions. You will be able to ask questions or write comments of support. I hope most of you have had a chance to log into Lumio using the email we have on file for you uh, or your organization. Uh, sorry, for you or your organization's membership. Note that only the, uh, the primary contact for each member organization should have received the Lumio invitation. When a decision needs to be made and recorded, uh, as we will do in all three General Assembly sessions, we will use another feature on Lumio called the consensus poll. Each time we use this feature, uh, we'll share a link in the Zoom chat box. Once you log into Lumio, you will see a page with the following three options, consent, abstain, or object. If you'd like, you can also add comments. You choose con if, you, if you choose consent, this means that you are sufficiently satisfied with the proposed decision and agree with the association adopting it and putting it into practice. If you choose abstain, this means that you do not want your views to be registered as consent, but you also do not want to block consensus. For example, you might abstain if you have a conflict of interest in the proposed decision. If you choose object, it means that you cannot live with a decision with that decision as it is currently proposed, and you are willing to block consensus. In this case, it is expected that you will provide a brief explanation as to why you object and offer some constructive alternatives that would enable you to consent. In some cases, people might simply require more information or discussion in order to feel sufficiently informed about the implications of the proposed decision. If you haven't yet interacted on Lumio, I recommend you click the link in the Zoom chat box now or during the break or later today. 
uh, log in and introduce yourself in the introductions thread. There you can also see the translate feature, which makes everyone's comments accessible in your preferred language. Once you log in, as long as you don't explicitly log out, it will be much easier to click the links as they are shared and go directly to the consensus polls for council elections. Uh, Xaviera Elorza will be in our uh, will be our uh, Lumio master and can help with any login issues. Her contact is in the Zoom chat box. In the fourth step, after clear consensus has been reached, the chair calls for a member in good standing to propose a motion on that decision and another member in good standing to second the motion, offer a final chance to voice any major concerns or opposition, and then confirm the approval of the, of the decision by consensus. The consensus decision is then recorded in the official minutes of the, of the General Assembly. Finally, if it proves impossible to reach consensus and a decision has to be reached for the good of the association, then the decision goes to a vote. The chair will call for a vote using an appropriate online tool, such as the voting tool in Lumio and or in Zoom if you are unable to access Lumio. All member organizations who are in good standing and present electronically in this case or by voting uh, or voting by proxy are expected uh, to participate. A supermajority of two thirds of such members is required for the decision to pass. I hope all of this is clear and thank you for your uh, thank you for listening. I'll now pass it back to the chair to check if we have a shared understanding of this description of consensus uh, and the process to take consensus based decisions during the online General Assembly. Teddy. Thank you, Colin. Uh, Colin has explained uh, about the quorum. And while it cannot be determined at this, at this point, but I'm pretty sure that because we have about 131 participants, hopefully most are members of good standing. But Otherwise, we will still have the Lumio mechanism determine uh, within the next two weeks whether our decisions in today's uh, General Assembly is covered by a quorum. Actually, we already started building these consensus guidelines. Uh, if I remember two years ago during the first online General Assembly, and then in, uh, last, uh, in the last General Assembly, we actually implemented already the consensus building. So, Probably there will be only a few clarifications or questions, but if ever there are members who would like to clarify or ask questions, the floor is now open. And Colin and I, uh, with the help of the Global Secretariat, will answer your questions or clarifications. So are there questions on the consensus uh, decision guidelines, consistent decision-making guidelines? Hearing none, the agenda is hereby adopted and approved by this body. Thank you. Uh, and now, let's now proceed to the business at hand. I will present the council report. Now, this was prepared by our vice president, uh, Patricia Mupeta, painstakingly prepared this with help from the secretariat. Unfortunately, she will not be able to join us uh, in this session today. So I have been asked to read the council uh, report. So while I read this, there will be, I think, a PowerPoint presentation to be flashed on screen. Okay. So just imagine that I am Patricia because this is the person, first person. Greetings, fellow ICCA consortium family. From far and wide, my name is Patricia Mopeta, current Vice President of the ICCA Consortium. I reside in the ancestral home of the Kaisan here in the Western Cape 
of South Africa. On behalf of our Council, I would like to share the Council report on our past work in 2022. But let's begin. What is the ICCA's Consortium Council? What is the ICCA Consortium's Council? Okay. Let us recap for those who have been part of the ICCA Consortium and share for those new members and honorary members of what the ICCA Consortium is. The Council, I mean the, con the Council's Consortium is. No? The Council is one of the three main governance organs of the association along with the General Assembly, we are the General Assembly, and the Auditor of Accounts. The Council primarily provides high-level guidance and strategic leadership and direction and supports processes of major organizational change such as leadership transitions and strategic planning. According to our statutes, the council is composed of a minimum of seven and a maximum of 30 individuals who are from the membership and elected by the General Assembly. Council members can serve for up to three year terms. The council has two standing committees. First, we have the executive committee, which is responsible for the regular oversight and guidance of all aspects of the association's operation in close collaboration with the Secretariat. It consists of five council members, namely the President, the Vice President, the Secretary, the Treasurer, and Chair of the Membership Committee. Second, we have the Membership Committee, who is responsible for overseeing and guiding the association's memberships. So now we'll have updates from 2022 to early 2023. Before last year's General Assembly, we had 20 people in the council. After last year's GA, we had 22 people in the council. With the election of Malika Virdi as regional representative for South Asia and Victor Boton as the regional representative for the Sahel, North Africa, and Horn of Africa. I would like to acknowledge and thank this powerful group of representatives who have contributed to the council. Thank you very much to the 22 members of this council. In 2022, we improved the planning and regularity of council and committee meetings. We had a total of four council meetings throughout the year, once per quarter. Our executive committee, five members from the council, held seven meetings throughout the year, generally in the months where the council did not meet. And the membership committee under Aman had three meetings. Last year, after a suggestion during the General Assembly, the Secretariat started tracking the participation of each council member in each council meeting, so the attendance. Yeah? Although we had relatively high participation rates in the ex committee, we had relatively low participation rates in the council meetings. In the first council meeting of the year, 60% of the council members joined. So we had a majority. In the second and third meetings, we only had 40% of the council members who were in attendance. And in the final meeting of final meeting of 2022, 50% of council members joined. So clearly, we have a problem with regards to engaging council members during council meetings. No? As of now, four council members have completed their term and are not standing for the election or for other positions. And please join me in thanking them. We have Sara Alakara for the, them for the thematic representative for sustaining territories of life. Thank you very much, Sara. We have my uh, regional uh, friend, regional mate, Peter Kalang, the regional representative for Southeast Asia. We had Rice Perez Ramirez, the longest uh, members of this council, who was the regional representative for the Amazon. And Lucas Kintupurai, the regional representative for the South Cone and Andes. Thank you very much. No, unfortunately, they will not be joining us in the council, but we do express our gratitude. So these are some of the council slots that we need to fill in, fill up in the coming uh, 
in the second session no, of the General Assembly. Broadly, the Council and Executive Committee discussed the following important issues in 2022 and early 2023. First, the strengthening of the regionalization process and regional initiatives, including bringing more voices into the Council leadership. Second is the need to review the organization's vision, mission, and structure, and to develop a manifesto and a new strategic plan. Third is funding for the consortium, including past, current, and future trends. Fourth is discussions about the mandate of the council, responsibilities of council members, and challenges council members face in fulfilling these roles. We also discuss about the need to engage in discussions, discussions about organizational growth of the ICCA consortium with the Council of Elders. We, we discuss about the strengthening the nature of the relationship between the EXCO and the Secretariat. Discussion and call for dialogue ahead of COP15 about the growing debate about the distinctions between indigenous peoples and local communities. And earlier this month, we approved a revision to the governance procedures to update the regional representation for Africa as, re as requested by the Africa Regional Assembly. We also uh, planned, designed, and approved the General Assembly plans for 2023. The membership committee also had a very productive year. In the next presentation, we will hear from Aman Singh, chair of the membership committee. The Council and the two standing committees had secretariat support from Sarah Ryder, Alison Powell, uh. and Hope Jonas, as well as linguistic support from Manuel May Castillo and Camila Miranda Reyes in Spanish, Surya Thibault and Solène Chatelaine in French, sorry if I mispronounce your names, and Mathilde Kreiker with linguistic coordination. Now for the important highlights of what the council and executive committee plans to address in 2023. So this is what you need to hear about our plans. No? Our core focus is to provide leadership for and support the organizational process of reflection, revisioning and strategic planning, including developing a manifesto that sets out a stronger political direction for the association. This is going to happen in today's session and in the succeeding sessions. No? How the council operates. There has to be really regular regularity of council meetings, general assemblies, and engaging the council of elders. I, council of elders, will reach out to you in the coming days. No? Council agreed to meet at least twice online and once in person in 2023. So I'm looking forward to the in-person in 2023, which will be in conjunction with the organizational change process and to have extraordinary sessions if urgent matters arise. Plans are underway to engage the Council of Elders. Hello, Council of Elders. And the president and the vice president will uh, take care of that. Council meetings and engagement of council members, okay? We will organize meeting agendas with council members to ensure a balance between hearing from the regions and addressing emerging global issues for indigenous peoples and local communities, plus organizational level and procedural matters. matters. For the EXCO and Secretariat relationship, we want to include better defining the nature of this relationship and working together more effectively as the two entities representing the governance bodies and the operational and programmatic work. And for engagement with substantive, substantive issues, we would like to tackle funding for the consortium, including what funds should be used for and how we should be structured and resourced to best serve the association and global movement for territories of life building on past and present approaches. We will also have regional reflection discussions on COP15 and the IP local community debate, bringing more voices from the regions into discussions, into this discussion, 
particularly through national and regional assemblies. They should address how the outcomes of COP15 will impact our work and open up the debate on indigenous peoples and local communities. So a lot of work for the council, okay? Well, a lot of plans anyway. So on updates on the council members, before this general assembly, the council called for nominations for several positions that are vacant or for which current council members are eligible to stand for a second or third term. Please refer to the GA webpage for the full list of council positions that are open for nomination and refer to the governance procedures for details of the nomination and election process. Complete nominations received by today will be considered for election in the second GA on April 26. Nominations by May 3rd will be considered for election in the third GA session on May 31st. Please take note of, this debate, of these dates. No? So for the next session, April 26, the nominations have to be given today. Yeah. And for May, uh, for the May 31st session, that's a third session, the nominations have to be received by May 3rd. I hope I got it right. Anyway, let's now conclude this council report. It has been a true, it has truly been a busy and engaging year. Council members have worked hard at ensuring we provide leadership at a time when their mission is critical amidst all the global challenges. As the consortium grows, the needs of our members grow too. As a council, we continue to support and provide servant leadership to our members in a way that is current and efficient, but keeps to the soul of who we are, a family, a coalition of minds and soul that are protecting our territories of life. I want to thank each council and EXCO member and our amazing secretariat for leaning in. Yours in community service, Patricia Mopeta, Vice President of the ICCA Consortium Council. Okay. okay. Uh, so that's the council report. We now need to know the council report. So does anyone have any major questions about this report or any objections to the JA noting the report? Need a while to reflect on the council report, which was uh, beautifully crafted by Patricia. Are there any objections to note the support? Seeing and hearing none, the council report for 2022 and early 2023 is hereby noted. Okay. So now let's proceed to the membership committee report. We now uh, would like to hear from Aman Singh, the chair of the membership committee, who will present to us the 2022 membership report on behalf of the committee. Aman, you have the floor. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Teddy. So, Namaskar, good morning, good evening, friends. Uh, my name is Aman Singh, and I'm chair of the membership committee. I reside in Alwar in Rajasthan state of India. Last year, I was elected by the GA for my second term in this role. And I will be presenting the membership report to you today. As, uh, as chair of the membership committee, I work with other council members to oversee the ICCA consortium membership policy and procedures. We strive to nurture and maintain a membership that is rooted in the movement of territories of the life, has deep integrity and is active and collaborative. We also advise on membership related aspects 
of the ICCA consortium strategy and operations. Dominic from DRC, Ingi from China, Alfredi from Fiji, Paolo from Maldonado from Ecuador have been serving on membership committee with me for the past few years. I would like to thank them all for their contribution, especially thanks to Dominic, who is concluding his third and final term in the council in the week coming. Earlier this year, we had a major change in the Secretariat support team when Alison Powell concluded her role as administration coordination. At the end of February, we extended our sincere thanks and best wishes to Alison for her hard work and outstanding contribution to improving our membership review. And welcome new members and honorary members into our global community. Picking up the baton from Alison, Zavira Alorja took over the role of administration coordinator in January this year and will handle the practical logistics of membership intake rounds and supporting membership committee meetings, among other things. I would like to share a few key development since the last our general assembly held in April 2022. First, we had two membership intake rounds in 2022. We were pleased to welcome to the association of 28 new members and 35 honorary members from all regions. They joined us from Burkina Faso, Madagascar, Russia, Guatemala, Italy, China, Pakistan, and many other countries. We also had our first member organizations joining from Japan, Gabon, and Uganda, and our first honorary member from El Salvador. As a reminder, as stated in 2021, membership policy and procedures, members and honorary members are required to be in good standing in order to retain their membership. One of the conditions to be in good standing is to complete the trinilon membership review. This helps all of us better understand and update relevant information about the membership and to continually improve the association and membership engagement. After the 2020 member review, our first ever honorary member review took place between the June and September last year, that is 2022. Out of 453 members at the time, we received completed from forms from over half, about in say 50%. The following information relates only to what we have received in the completed forms, given the honorary member review was conducted online, we bear in mind the bias against honorary member who do not have easy access to internet or emails. About one third of honorary member 
who responded report working in Asia and the Pacific, followed by 23 in Latin America and equal numbers in Africa and Europe with 16%, less than 10% North America and less than 1% in Arctic. A significant proportion indicated that research or academia was their main profession. 25% of honorary members who responded self-identify as indigenous and 8% self-identify as belonging to a local community. More than two thirds who responded are neither indigenous nor from a local community. 63% of honorary members who responded to review are men. 37% are women, women and 0.7% choose not to say. These initial top line figures set important light on the composition of honorary members, at least among those who have responded to the review in 2022. Depending on your review views in the association, we have need to have a more internal, intentional approach to diversifying and strengthening representation among honorary members. For example, with an explicit focus on members on indigenous people and local communities and also women. We may also wish to focus more on people who are from the countries and region where they are primarily working and on people with skills and competences that are of direct relevance to the self-determined priorities of custodians of territories of life. That is, by further exploring the connections between the member and honorary member reviews. As noted before, a significant number of honorary members did not respond to the review last year, even after multiple reminders through different communication channels. This raises questions about their interest, commitment, and engagement in the association, and more broadly about the roles and contribution of honorary members. An important part of the review process will be reducing the number of honorary members who are inactive and uninterested to continue being part of the association. In the membership committee and council, we are more interested in the quality and integrity of the membership rather than number per se. So we see this is a necessary step in the evolution of our membership. As next steps, the membership committee will give a final opportunity to, men, to remaining 44% of the honorary members who did not respond to the review to do so, to get a more complete picture of the composition and engagement of the members of ICC consortium. We will continue discussion about how to move forward with inactive and unresponsive honorary members in accordance with our 2021 membership policy and procedures. 
we will also publish a publicly available summary report of the 2022 review. Finally, we are currently in the process of the first membership intake round of 2023. We received 10 member organization applications and nine individual honorary member nominations working globally and in 12 different countries. Some of them have joined us today as observers to learn more about the consortium and our membership and procedures. After the first session of the General Assembly, the membership committee will circulate detailed information to the current membership about the new applicants and nominee and intake the 30 days review period in line with our procedures. If no objections are raised within that period, they will be officially welcomed as a new members and honorary members of the ICC consortium. Stay tuned for this info and get to know them, their work. This concludes the membership report for this year General Assembly. So thank you for your attention and to everyone here who attends our General Assemblies and help us to strengthen our association and the work we do together. Thank you, thank you again. Over to you, Teddy. Thank you, Aman, and congratulations to the membership committee. Uh, thank you for giving us a very comprehensive report about the review process, including your insights on the demographics of our membership. So we really need to uh, intensify our efforts in trying to um, achieve gender balance, as well as more representation from the other regions who are underrepresented in this consortium as well as in engaging more indigenous peoples and local communities. So this, I think this, this uh, data will guide us in the months to come. Uh, but congratulations, 28 new members, 30 plus uh, honorary members. That's a good accomplishment. So, so with that, are there any questions or objections? Because we are now going to note the report of the membership committee uh, if there are no objections to the consortium noting the membership oh, committee report. Teddy, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry to yes. interrupt. There is a hand up. There is a hand okay. up here from Colombia. Yep. Okay. Uh, you are recognized, uh, Mr. Resguardo uh, from the Resguardo Indigenous. Uh, Hector Jaime Vinasco. Okay, bueno, okay. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias por el informe del Consejo de Membresía. Eh, simplemente era una pregunta muy concreta y es, eh, ¿a, ¿a qué le llaman miembro activo o miembro inactivo? Digamos, eh, eh, ¿cuál, ¿cuál es esa característica? Un poco para saber en, en qué punto estamos nosotros, pues hemos venido participando de las asambleas, hemos venido participando de las reuniones que se han convocado, eh, a nivel global y, y, y simplemente cuando lo, lo mencionaron se me, se me ocurría preguntar eh, cuál es la característica de un miembro activo y cuál es esa característica entonces de los miembros inactivos y tal vez si tienen un, un porcentaje de miembros inactivos. Muchas gracias. Thank you. That's a very um, relevant question. Anybody from the Secretariat or the membership committee? Uh, can you respond to that question? On who is an active member, what is inactive, and also I think the percentage of those who are active and inactive. Yes, Aman? Uh, uh, sorry, T Teddy, by this singlish translation, I could not manage to listen, so uh, I really don't know the question. Sorry for that. So if it is possible to, if somebody in English, it can sort of repeat that. 
From our interpreters, can you repeat the question if you can recall it? Like basically, the question, I'm, oh yeah, go ahead, Holly. I think you were just going to say it, Teddy. You, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Aman, uh, essentially, the question is uh, how do you define who is an active member or inactive member? You know? And just maybe some information about um, how, how much percentage of the members are inactive and, and active. You know? So, uh, as I just uh, in my presentation, I mentioned that we did this review. And there was a review format, and under that review format, there are many questions, you know. And if somebody has not replied, or even despite of many reminders, if not they, are, they have not replied, so we still give chances. But if we don't hear for a longer time, then we also write, you know, kind of uh, through our procedures, we write them that please respond to that. So that there are a whole rest, uh, stages, procedures for that. And based on that, we take these decisions. But if you only, only want to add anything, please go ahead. Uh, yes, sure. Hi, everyone. This is Holly Jonas here. I'm with the Secretariat. Uh, so in our membership policy and procedures, it specifies the conditions for a member to be in good standing and also for an honorary member to be in good standing. So for example, members uh, in good standing have both completed the triennial membership review and have contributed and communicated at least one form of voluntary collective action in support of our mission each year each calendar year or between general assemblies, whichever comes first. So examples of collective action includes, for example, um, if you are an indigenous or community custodian of a territory of life, caring for that territory uh, is, is the, the collective action, yeah? If you're not a direct custodian, you could be doing a whole range of things to support our mission, documentation, communication, serving in the council, uh, hosting a regional coordination team, organizing a peer learning and exchange events, contributing to the youth group. There's a whole range of possibilities there. Um, there's a list of examples in the membership procedures, but it's not exhaustive. So we always encourage uh, creativity in that regard. And um, basically, a similar approach is taken with honorary members. Um, so I think everybody who's here in the assembly today probably, or maybe not everybody, most, most organizations with us today um, are in good standing already. And Saviera and the regional coordinators were hopefully in touch with you um, in advance of the general assembly to double check if there were any questions about that. Um, so, yes, I think we're doing quite well with particularly member organizations at Good Standing. As Aman said during the membership committee report, there are quite a few honorary members uh, who are not currently in Good Standing due to lack of response to the honorary member review, lack of communication in general to multiple requests for information, etc. cetera. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, as Colin said in his presentation, uh, I've off the top of my head, I think it was 196 members in good standing, I think, out of a total of 217 members. Um, so a very high proportion of the members are in good standing. I hope that helps clarify. Thank you, Aman and Holly. Um... So there's a whole range of activities that we can participate in. Uh, remember, we already removed the membership fees, um, but we wanted um, more members and other members to be more active in the activities, whether it's the CBD, whether it's the conferences, whether it's the GA or the council meetings, as well as activities of our thematic committees and in your own regional assemblies. So 
um, that's a vast majority, no? 190 plus are uh, very active. We also have a question or a hand raised from Dana Cooperative. You recognize? Dana Cooperative. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Khaled Khawalde from Jordan Dana Cooperative. Thank you all. I just want to um, ask if we, um, I think the Secretariat should send like a reminder about what is the, uh, the uh, criteria for the uh, good standing member or honorary member so that to remind uh, everybody to do his uh, task uh, in, uh, in earlier before it's too late for them to, to do it. The uh, other thing is I'm asking uh, whether it's still open uh, for um, nomination of new members and honorary uh, members. Thank you. Okay, we'll ask Holly to respond to the first question and Amen to the second question. Right, Khalid, it's very nice to hear you. Uh, I hope everything's going well with you and family with Ramadan who are happening now. Um, so yes, there have been actually multiple reminders sent by the Secretariat and by Aman as the chair of the membership committee throughout the process of the member review and the honorary member review, um, as well as before the General Assembly, there were emails sent particularly to the honorary members um, uh, who did not respond to the review to confirm if, what they have contributed in order to be in good standing. Um, so perhaps there's maybe some emails being missed there. Um, maybe we can, yeah, better understand what people would prefer in terms of that. I know several regional coordinators also reach out to members via WhatsApp or phone, uh, given connectivity challenges. So we're doing our best. I, I do think that you know, if there are multiple reminders sent with no responses, then there also needs to be some mutual responsibility there from the membership. Um, if they have indicated certain email addresses that are no longer functioning or you need to update them in our membership database, then that's the responsibility of the members and honorary members to update the secretariat as well. Yeah, um, I hope that helps. Thanks. Thanks, Holly. Aman? Yeah, yeah. As I also mentioned in my presentation, that we are currently in the process of first membership intake round. So this is the first round, but the, there, there is another round uh, in after three, four months. So if somebody already have applied, so we'll be con considered for this round. Otherwise, the remaining application may shift to the second round. So yes, we already in the process. Thanks, Aman. Actually, there's an information uh, at the chat that says that 191 members and 280 honorary members are in good standing and that online forms in 2023 were already sent. These are for the membership review for both uh, members and honorary members. We also have a question from Sarah Yaku. You are recognized. Hi, good morning. Just I am Daniel Santi, and I would like to propose two things uh, to the report. First, I would like to change the name of the consortium. We should take into account, I, I would propose the organization, the global organization of territories of lives because the consortium sounds as an entity as a corporative entity second i've seen that the biggest part of territories of life are in the territory indigenous territories then there's a different percentage which is in within the local communities and then there's another percentage all in those territories that are not considered 
as indigenous uh, territories or local territories. And all these are territories of life. I think that this organization of territories, global organization of territories of life, we need to work so that the countries will recognize the right of uh, of territories of love. And in order to do that, we need to establish different mechanisms at a national and a local and an international level so that we will be able to propose to the governments and to the states that they will recognize a new a new category of uh, for these territories of life because otherwise we have been keeping it and this is essential in order to find a solution to the climate crisis this is my proposal and thank you so much for letting me speak gracias señor daniel uh, yes uh, the discussions on change of name has been discussed in previous General Assembly. I think we will continue discussing about this in our internal reflections uh, in, in this session and in the coming session, and even during the strategic planning of the council. Definitely your proposal will be discussed. No? Uh, likewise, I would suggest that you do attend the session tomorrow because we will have some updates as to what happened in the Convention for Biodiversity. Again, your points uh, regarding uh, recognition of our territories of life will be uh, discussed um, more in detail in tomorrow's um, session on, on what happened, what transpired during the Convention for Biodiversity, COP15. Okay. Any other comments? Questions on the membership committee report? Mm -hmm. If none, then the report of the membership committee is hereby noted. Thank you again and congratulations to the membership committee.